Hey everybody, the, those last two uh, satire videos I made, well, I was just trying something new. It didn't really work that well, but it was kind of fun to do. I'm going back now to what I was doing, just philosophical musings on religion and morality. So, enjoy. It's pretty much common knowledge that emotions have a physiological effect on the body. And these effects are things generally meant to help us survive in situations that cause us to feel these emotions. So when we're scared, you know, the adrenaline starts pumping and you the fight or flight thing happens and you're have increased endurance and all that. Not only that, but your heart beats faster and I guess some people sweat. I don't know. Other stuff like that. Now, something that I have seen a lot of, of religious people do is that they confuse the physiological effects that uh, their emotions have with, uh, with things that have actual meaning. So, like when they think about their God or when they're you know, praying, talking to themselves, and it makes them feel good, they call it the Holy Spirit. And when this feeling of happiness, this euphoria, uh, inspires them, they like to say that it's their God inspiring them, whoever their God may be. I think I just said Christians a while ago, but I, I think this, uh, this applies to all religions pretty universally. A lot of people in the United States, uh, we're taught from birth to have certain emotional reactions to certain things. Things that aren't even necessarily bad or wrong. Or badong, the opposite of which is gnadab. I think this is where a lot of guilt comes from when you're taught to have certain emotional reactions to things like stealing, lying, uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll, alcohol, which fits under the drugs category. You know, even just the concept of some of these things is enough to get some people feeling bad or angry or sad or whatever. I guess angry and sad are both bad. And many people think that just because they're having these reactions that it means these things are universally bad. They, they attribute their emotional reactions to a divine presence and then take this to back up their position that there is a, a an objective morality. I remember a few months ago there was a, maybe it was as much as a year ago uh, there was a video by uh, by God Invented Music best YouTube Christian out there but she raised an, an, an interesting point how a lot of people feel shame when it comes to nudity and they feel that their bodies are something that they should cover up as a, a moral imperative and this I think is because nudity is seen by a lot of religions as a sexual thing and sexuality is something that must be repressed. And so because of this belief, sexual feelings are often associated with feelings of shame, which results in all kinds of stuff, a lot of sexual deviance, D-V-E-I-A-N-C-E, not T-S, it basically comes from sexual repression. But that's not what this is about, so I shouldn't be getting off track like that. Uh, but, yeah, I think I made my point. A lot of uh, 
religious people, and that even not even ah, even non-religious people who are just superstitious, they'll take their feelings about something and the physiological effects that it has on them, and then they start to believe that these effects mean that there's something extra meaningful in the thing that produces these effects. When really there is none, there is an explanation for the feelings or for the effects that they have on you. And it all goes back to the desire for certain things to be true because they make them feel good. Even when something has a negative effect on them emotionally, like feeling shame about sexuality, it, it's held on to because it supports their belief in Yahweh and salvation and their fear of death. <laughs>